Hello again everyone, Mr. Cruz here with another review for you. This time, the Probability and Statistics sections 9.1 to 9.2 quiz review. Uh, this quiz is over one mean and two mean T tests. We're doing a little hypothesis testing. Uh, in order to use T, your sample size needs to be less than 30. Uh, in both samples, if there's two means. Um, and so that's what this whole test is about. All right. So, number one, let's start. The skid properties of a current snow tire have been tested and a mean skid distance of 154 feet has been established for standardized conditions. A new, more expensive tire is developed. Tests on a sample of 17 new tires yield a mean skid distance of 148 feet with a standard deviation of 12 feet. Because of the cost involved, new tires will be purchased only if it can be shown at the 5% significance level that they skid a shorter distance than the current tires. Based on the sample information, will new tires be purchased? All right. So step one, identify the null and the alternate hypothesis. This one's boarded just a little weird, maybe. Uh, new tires, new tires will be purchased only if it can be shown. So we're trying to show that the skid that they skid a shorter distance than the current tires. Shorter, meaning less. So that means the mean needs to be less than what they claimed originally, which is 154. Obviously, then, if that one's less than, the other one has to be greater than or equal to. Remember, the equal to is always in the null hypothesis. You guys are getting good at that. Step two is identify the level of significance, which in this case is 0 0.05. Again, they'll give that to you. Step three, this is obviously a t-test, and the reason is uh, we sampled 17 new tires, so it's less than 30. And the way you know it's one mean versus two mean is as you read through it, they only say standard deviation once. Okay, and there's only one sample. So this is a one mean test. One mean tests are just slightly easier. So step four is uh, to determine why we're gonna reject. So this is a left-tailed test because the um, inequality is less than, right? So left-tailed, so if I draw a little picture, I've got my tail to the left. I want 5% in that tail. And normally, if this were Z, I'd just be able to look things up. But with T, we need one extra thing, and that's the degrees of freedom. All right, Degrees of freedom is determined by the sample size minus the number of samples. In this case, sample size uh, was 17 new tires that they checked. And there's only one sample, so 17 minus 1. So our degrees of freedom is 16. So what you do is you go to your table, look at the degree of freedom 16 row, and look for p-value 0.05. Your, your t-table gives you in the upper tail. We're looking in the lower tail, but it'll be the same area. You should get a t-score of negative, since we're in the left tail, uh, 1.746, negative 1.746. So we are going to reject if our t-value is less than negative 1.746. So let's actually calculate our t-score. This is step five. Uh, T is pretty simple for a one mean test, right? It's your sample mean, which they say the new sample's mean is 148, minus uh, your your population mean, which is 154, so mu, x bar minus mu, all over the standard deviation, which in this case was 12, divided by the square root of n, which was the number in your sample size, not 8. I'm thinking ahead to a different problem. It's 17. Uh, please be careful. Make sure you don't use degrees of freedom accidentally. It is the sample size, not degrees of freedom. Anyway, you can punch this all in your calculator. Just be very careful. Make sure you use parentheses uh, very, very liberally here. Um, and you end up with negative 2.062. Again, if you are having trouble typing these in, you don't get the same values I do, please make sure you're coming in and asking for help, all right? Well, is negative 2.062 less than negative 1.746? The answer is yes. So that means we are going to reject our null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to say it is less than, or rather the, the uh, skid distance is shorter than the current tires. So we can say, we can say that the new tires, the new tires skid less than 154 feet. There's enough evidence to say that. All right. So what does that mean in the context of the problem? So will new tires be purchased? Well, we're only going to purchase them if they skid shorter, a shorter distance. So yeah, we'll purchase them. Uh, yes, purchase them. OK. Very informed decision here. By the way, real quick, I want to take a look at p-value. 
uh, because you will need to do p-value. All you do is look up this number on your table. Obviously, look up the positive because we're uh, on our table. We don't have the negative. Okay. Look up the positive. You want to find two numbers that are around it. When you do, you look up at the p-values that are there, and you find that it's between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05, uh, or basically two and a half percent to five percent of the time. Is that smaller or bigger than five percent of the time, which is your alpha value? Well, it's definitely smaller, right? Uh, so since p is smaller than alpha, that just confirms that we reject. All right, very cool. Number two, the tensile strength of a metal is a measure of its ability to resist tearing when it's pulled lengthwise. Using a new experimental type of treatment and the old method, steel bars were produced with the following tensile strengths. This is in newtons per square millimeter, um, so there's some numbers there for you. At the 1% significance level, does the new method make a difference in the tensile strength of the steel bars? I notice there's two samples here, so already I know I'm going to be comparing two different means. So there's going to be two different mu's. Uh, we want to show, um, does the new method make a difference? Difference meaning not equal to. So I'm going to do uh, mu new, <laughs> that's kind of fun to say, mu new and mu old. Uh, mu new is equal to mu old is the null hypothesis that we're trying to either reject or not reject. Step two, level of significance, 0 0.01, 1%. Uh, step three, this is obviously a t-test. Both of our sample sizes are less than 30. There's definitely not... Uh, there's not even 30 numbers there between the two samples. Um, and by the way, this is a two mean test because they gave us two samples. Okay. Sometimes there are some problems where they won't just give you a set of data. They'll actually tell you two different standard deviations. That'll be another way to know that it's two mean. All right. <clears throat> step four. This is a two-tailed test because it's not equal to. Again, these are just the same steps we've been doing this whole time. Uh, it's two-tailed, so that means our area is split between the two tails. Half of 1% would be uh, half of a percent, right, or 0 0.005. I'm going to look up, uh, oop, I can't use my table yet. I have to look up degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom changes just a little bit when you have two means. What you do is you take both of your sample sizes. So the first sample is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. The second sample size is two more than that, so that's 12. You can count that if you don't believe me. And you always subtract the number of samples, which in this case is 2, because there's a new and an old. Uh, so 10 plus 12 is 22, minus 2 is 20. So our degrees of freedom uh, is 20. Sorry, that was my puppy that decided to add to the video there. All right, so degrees of freedom, when you look up 0 0.005, uh, in, well, within the degree of freedom 20, you get 2.845 for your t-score. Obviously, that's the positive, so the negative will be the negative of that, negative 2.845. So we are going to reject if our t value is less than negative 2.845 or if it comes out to be greater than 2.845. All right, step five. This is the fun step, all right? Um, there's a real complicated formula for this. Um, you're going to need several things, though. You're going to need the sample mean and the sample standard deviation for both. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and list the sample size as well, which that we already know the first one's 10. And I have to list it for both the new, the new method and the old method, all right? Uh, so there's 12 in that one, okay? So what you do is you're going to go to your calculator, graphing calculator. You're going to type in the first set of data. You're going to go to stat. One var stats, and you're going to hit enter. It should give you a mean of 340.3. We've done that in class, right? And the sample standard deviation is 22.301 for the first sample. The second sample, the mean is 389.917 uh, with a standard deviation of 15.090. Please make sure you do them one at a time, right? Make sure you input the first set of data first figure that out, clear it, and then do the second set of data. Do not type it all in at once, all right? First thing you have to find for this is the pooled sample standard deviation. Uh, the pooled standard deviation, rather. Um, and to do that, the formula is just a little messy. First, you take the sample size minus 1, which in this case is 9, right? 10 minus 1 is 9, times the standard deviation squared, plus the exact same thing with the second sample. So 12 minus 1 would be 11. Uh, oop, I'm going to write it a little differently, times the standard deviation squared 
divided by your degrees of freedom, which in this case is 20. Okay. So very quickly, I want to show you how to type this in your calculator um, so that we make sure we do it all correct. So obviously you need a square root. You notice your calculator already puts a parenthesis there for you. You're going to put another parenthesis because you want this entire thing to be under the square root. Okay. Some of you have 84s. It'll keep it all under the square root, so that's good. Uh, so I'm going to type 9 times the standard deviation 22.301 squared okay plus notice I'm just typing it as I wrote it plus 11 times 15.09 you really don't need that last zero but that's fine squared close parentheses because that's the top but notice I'm still under the square root because there's an extra set of parentheses divided by and I always put the bottom in parentheses uh, for some of these problems anyway throw a second one on there and you should get that, <clears throat> 18.683. So our pooled standard deviation is 18.683, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this stuff. That erased, uh, lovely. All right, just to give myself some room here. And we're gonna move this guy up just a little bit, all right? Now to calculate our T-score, <clears throat> you're gonna take your first mean minus your second mean. And please again note, just make sure you go in the correct order, right? Whatever your first mean is over here, that's the first sample mean you need to use over here, all right? Divided by, so mean minus mean, divided by your pooled standard deviation, which is 18.683, uh, times, and you don't really even need the parenthesis here, square root of one over your sample size one, plus one over your sample size two, all right? Again, we can go to our handy dandy calculator, type this in, 340.3 minus 389, actually make sure you actually type the digits, 39.917 divided by, and use parentheses again for the bottom, 18.683, and you really don't even need the times here, but you can put it if you want, square root, and literally you can just type the fractions as is, one tenth plus one twelfth divided by, right? And then you just close off all your parentheses and you hit enter and you should get negative 6.202. So your T-score is negative 6.202. So are we gonna reject? <clears throat> you bet we will. This is a reject, the null hypothesis because it's definitely smaller than negative 2.845. Uh, and we can actually say the new method does make a difference. The new method is different. It does make a difference. So, <clears throat> uh, p-value time. Just make sure you're careful here. P-value, you're going to look up this t-score, obviously the positive, in the 20th degree of freedom row. You'll notice there are no numbers even close to it, which means you're going to use the far right thing that I told you. Uh, which means your P is actually going to be less than twice, and I say twice because it's two-tailed, uh, 0 0.0005, okay? Uh, either way, obviously, it's still going to be pretty small, so P is less than alpha, definitely. Uh, tenth of a percent is definitely less than one percent, uh, so it is reject. It just confirms what we said, all right? Here's the plan for the rest of the video. Uh, instead of making a second video, what I've done is I have taken problems three and four, and I've already gone ahead and done them. Isn't that magic? Uh, so I'm gonna leave it on the screen. This is problem number three. You can pause this video and you can actually just check your work. Okay, I'll be quiet for a second. So that's number three. Again, if you have any questions, just ask. And I will put number four up here as well so you can check your work on all this. All right, I'll try and get as much of this in as I can to the screen. Um, anyway, pause the video there. And there you have it. All four of these uh, ended up being reject. It's kind of funny how that worked out. They won't always be reject, I promise. Uh, but anyway, if you can do these particular questions, you can do the quiz tomorrow. It's literally four questions. Looks very similar to this. If you need anything, please tweet me, at Mr. Cruz Math. If you have any uh, other questions, you can email me. Or stop in and see me in the morning. All right? I will see you tomorrow. Good luck.